Welcome to the Me The Money Show. I'm Dan Barnes, Editorial Director of Markets Media Europe, and with me is John Dantona, Editor of Traders. John, uh, can you tell us what stories you've been looking at this week? Sure. This week, uh, two of the more popular stories going on in the uh, U.S. markets. Uh, we'll start with something a little more global, for sure, and that is about Bitcoin and the new, uh, upcoming phenomena of Bitcoin halving. So what first people might ask is what exactly is halving? And every four years, the Bitcoin network undergoes a halving process, and that's to ensure value of Bitcoin. And what happens quite simply is there's a finite limit to the amount of Bitcoins that are mined. As an incentive to mine, Bitcoin miners are paid X amount of Bitcoins. Well, every four years, that allotment of reward gets halved, hence the name halving. So John, what's halving? Well, halving is the time of every four years, the Bitcoin under network undergoes a payment to the miners. Miners are supplied with X amount of Bitcoins as their compensation for creating Bitcoin, which is a very energy and labor intensive process. So this year, the award is going to be 6.2 Bitcoins uh, for every uh, thing that they mine. Last year, it was 12.5. And the year prior, it was 25. Right. Hence halving. Correct. And what's unique is that this having phenomena takes place hopefully around May 12th. It's one of those guarded secrets of the market, if you will. And when, as a student of economics, one would think when there's a having, the value of Bitcoins would go up. Yeah. This year, it looks like that might not be the case or their value may not be go up as much as expected. And that's because of some very interesting factors. Okay. Can you explain those? Sure. One of the factors is, first of all, we've got this Corona and uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which has played chaos with all of the financial markets. You add to that the fact that you have uh, the Federal Reserve here in the United States injecting tremendous amounts of liquidity into the market, uncertainty about debt issuance, and it becomes a very large um, question mark as to how much exactly that value can go up. Uh, a lot of people are talking about maybe not up as much or even maybe not at all. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Just out of interest, is there, do you see this impacting the potential for Bitcoin to be used by institutional investors more or less? Well, I don't see it necessarily impacting the institutional market so much as Bitcoin really still remains a retail investor market. But what would happen, I would think, is when you start looking at some of the nuts and bolts of this market, delving down into it, you know, the, the Bitcoin options market, which I got an education in just recently, you know, they're believing that the market is more concerned about Bitcoin values dropping, actually, than they are rising. It's, it's really a unique phenomenon. And some of the people I spoke to you know, they talk about implied volatility. They talk about uh, an expiry of certain other bi uh, Bitcoin competitors. So what people are really examining here is not so much that how much Bitcoin is going to go up, but the real potential for the first time, how much Bitcoin could go down. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you very much. And what else have you been looking at this week? One of the other things that we've been looking at, and that is... Uh, the IPO and secondary markets here. It's no secret that the COVID-19 pandemic shut down everything in terms of the IPO market and to a certain degree, the stock buyback markets here in the United States. You know, the question is, where have all the IPOs gone? I'm not sure, but they're not on CNBC and they're not in my reports. So what the businesses are beginning to look at is alternate ways of creating cash. And, you know, for companies, whether it's travel, retail, restaurants, they need to find fresh capital. And in this environment, they need to find it fast. So what people are turning to are the, the secondary markets. The minute an IPO is priced, those, those uh, shares are in, released into the market secondary and scooping them up and reselling them. It's the simple 
buy low, sell high kind of mentality. And traders are becoming more and more aware and looking for tools that would help them find this, if you will, arbitrage or these yep. opportunities. What tools are they using for that? Well, one tool uh, comes from a firm called Triad, and they have this app where the minute a security goes live, it comes out of the lockup period, it flashes on a trader's screen, say, XYZ Corp now live to trade. Well, right. that you want to act on that information as quick as possible to get ahead of the crowd. It's a, it's a tool that can be done on your handheld or your desktop. It's an app. And that's one of the big things that's out there right now. And of course, getting that timely and reliable intel on those new in issues shouldn't be difficult, but it can be. And any yeah. edge in today's market would definitely help. That's great. Excellent. John, thank you so much. You're very welcome.